Good morning and welcome back to Evil Shenanigans in our International World Training Center and Compound, deep in the heart of Texas. We are working on part three of our EPC knife build. Thank you, Josh, for keep laughing at me. Hi. I am James, and of course this is Josh. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm going to kick it over to him so we can get started. All right, so let's take a look where we are. We've got our two knives profiled and laid out for where we're going to put our holes. Or, uh, scales and so today we're going to focus on doing the heat treatment um, and so first step we just put these through a tremendous amount of stress forging them out going from a piece of metal you know round bar flattening them out to this so it puts the metal under a lot of stress so we're going to do some normalization cycles um, so what we've recently learned is we're going to take them up to about 1500 degrees we're going to let them air cool and dip down below 400 degrees. We'll do that cycle three times. Um, and then that should have all the stresses relieved and it'll help refine the grain structure of the steel and make it good, durable, usable material. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a couple of fighting knives. Yeah. Um, and then from there, we'll go ahead and drill our holes and get everything set up. And then we'll do our quench and harden them. And then we'll get set up for our temper. We'll just do in the oven and we won't film that because it's like two hours of sitting around waiting for a knife to get cool hot. So, unless y'all guys want to watch that, and if so, leave a message. That's true, the longer videos are doing better, so yeah, maybe we should film <laughs> the two hour timber cycles. All right, so remember to like, subscribe, and That's right. comment. There you go, very nice. Um, since we've got our points really pointy, we're going to put them in backwards so we don't overheat the tips.
funnel shaped and you want to leave the edge around the thickness of a dime before you do any of this stuff. Um, if you go too much thinner than that, the wrist will kind of warp it. or something and saw somebody wearing his knife on it on their hip and just you know as a joke he's like hey man that's a really nice knife and the guy said yeah i just finished forging it this morning and you know kind of was a little upset about that understandably so i guess the point is you know sign your word because if you don't somebody else will Right, 
this year's back in.
help get everything back into a straight line. Straight ish, anyway. Alright. We'll count that one as a thermal cycle. I didn't let it hit down low enough before. Yeah. So we're going to do a thermal cycle. 
the last or third thermal cycle. Let it cool down until you can pretty well handle it. So then we need to drill our holes before we hard the blades. But it'll probably take me two or three times to get that bigger tank to the temperature. You got your gloves on? Cool. What is it? It's broken. by yourself? Good job. Stay back here. Alright. All right, so we uh, hit a snag in production. So we are currently annealing the two project knives. 
Um, they're made from W1 uh, round stock, uh, which is drill rod, and they're already kind of hardened. Um, and even going through the forging process and all that, it didn't quite work out to where we could drill holes through it. And so instead of burning up a bunch of drill bits and breaking it and saying bad words on camera, um, we heated, heated them up in the forge, blocked it off, and we're letting it cool down slowly over, it'll probably take an hour or so for it to cool down. Uh, and then it'll soften up the metal enough. We should be able to drill through it. So James is working on a different knife. This. Trying to put in vine pattern. So we're using some hand files to lay out that little vine pattern. Yeah, I've, I've put it on a bunch of crap. I, I think it looks pretty cool. So, take you on a tour of our shop. There's our Batman mobile. There's our uh, cooling system. State of the art cooling system. State of the art. There's our anvil. State of the art. State of the art uh, stump. There's our proprietary carpet. Tempering method. It's, uh, it's how we uh, we quench our knives on that carpet from time to time, uh, protects them from rust and, you know, breakage. There's our uh, propane tank forge. That's our Mr. Shooty target we made. It was a lot of fun. So there's our little forge that I have. I can't remember what kind it is, so don't ask. <laughs> or you can ask, I just won't answer you. There's our grinder. James brought his uh, drill press today. There's our bench grinder. This is our wire wheel attachment that tries to break your thumb. Use caution. There's our little bit bigger sander. Most important feature, of course, is our, our speakers so we can listen to some tunes. And our refrigerator to keep our beverages cold. Yeah, our cold beverages. There's our uh, toolbox of tools and awesomeness. And those are spare propane tank. Spare, yeah, our swap out tank. That one's empty, which is usually how it goes. This one will be empty in a little while, and we'll have to just go buy two. There's our little workbench and our tool storage area. It's highly organized. State of the art. State of the art. And then here's our quench tank. State of the art. Um, it's it's a T post driver, and it's filled with canola oil. One of these days I'll invest and get some actually good quenchant, but you know, it is what it is. So, all right, we'll check back in in probably an hour or so when that thing's cooled off enough. Hopefully we can drill holes in it. Yeah. All right, so an hour and a half later, we're back where we were just a little bit ago. We're gonna heat up our oil, get ready to quench. That uh, drill rod did a, some evil shenanigans on us. It was too hard to drill through, so we had to anneal it. Like I said earlier, so it took about an hour and a half, uh, but we're there. We got our holes drilled, we got them cleaned up. So I want to check the temperature of our oil to see where we're at. Just backing it in. That's what I thought. Get that handle hot first, and it'll start building towards the tip, and then you can flip it around and speed it back up and catch it up. Pop it in and let it yeah. soak up. We'll just, we'll just do them 
separately. That way one doesn't get away from us. Right. That's a good idea. Because we get that third knife on that bridge too. Oh, you want to do that one today too? Yeah, yeah might as well. We can do it in the big tank because it'll probably heat up as much yeah. as that small tank. The dust will just give us some time. temperature it is in that forge that's what temperature you know colors are going to even out yeah. so yeah you, you kind of lose it it's so bright um, here scoot it forward a little bit and let's hit it with the front burner there you go right there. go about right there and then kick that front burner on is it all sticky on the road. Dude, we're trying to film. Shenanigans Nature Channel. All right, cut that front burner. So we see where we're at. All right, flip it around and start painting that blade. Here, I'm gonna drop your pressure down. down and then agitate don't take it all the way out just keep it in there there you go perfect okay. now hand me the tip just take it tip. from the spine okay. got it got it all right to the striking jig stay in the art Now this is the critical part in the quench of not messing with it. Just leave it alone. That's one thing I've learned. Put it in there, clamp it straight, now just walk away and do something else. Leave it alone. If you try to file on it right now to check it for hardness, you're gonna think it's too soft and I promise you it's not. We've, yeah. we've experimented quite a bit with this. And just keeping, leave it alone. And keeping it in this will help ensure that the blade has less warpage. That's, that's the plan anyway. Right, but it could pull shenanigans. It might. This might be a really amusing video. Hey, so far, it looks pretty good though. Hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's swap. You wanna take this glove? Oh, you're gonna be a man about it and not wear a glove? Because Josh never lights himself on fire, apparently.
always makes me this nervous. Is you, this one you see, like, okay, did we do a good job, or did this go horribly wrong? Yeah. So our next step after this is we're gonna just put it in the oven and temper it. Uh, yeah, you can temper it with a forge or a torch or whatever, but it's too easy to mess that up. So we're just gonna preheat the oven. I think I'm gonna temper mine a little lower temper. Um, I'm probably gonna set mine at 350. Uh, I had pretty good results with that on the, the last knife I made. Uh, so I'm gonna temper this one and leave it a little bit on the harder side. If you wanna... So basically what we're doing, when we quench this knife, it's hard. And the steel becomes hardened, but it's hard like glass, so it's super brittle. So we've got to draw back some of that hardness and you do that through tempering, which is just adding heat back to it. But it has to be very controlled where you go too soft. Um, so typically around 400 degrees or so will get you a, a usable hardness on the metal, but it'll be flexible enough to, to actually you know, not shatter or break or whatever. Um, so I, I think I'll probably do mine about 350, maybe 375. The easiest way to do it is just use your oven at home. Um, I usually put a screw through one of the, the pin holes hang it from the rack so it's not laying on one side because I've actually had a board doing it that way. Uh, so everything's all nice and even. Go ahead and preheat your oven. Uh, don't stick your knife in a cold oven and then turn it on because occasionally on a home, a kitchen appliance oven, that temperature will spike up over your target range to try to get it heated up faster. So go ahead and just let it even out, put it in there. Um, we'll do probably two cycles of an hour and a half each, uh, whatever, whichever temperature you pick, are you, what are you gonna do? Um, I was thinking 375 for two hours. Okay. So I'm gonna do hour and a half cycles. I'm gonna do one hour and a half at 350, pull it out, let it cool back down to room temperature, and then put it back in for another hour and a half cycle. See, I was just gonna do it all in one shake. Yeah, I, I like to do the little break in between. Is there any particular reason I why? I think it adds, it's almost kind of like doing a refining cycle and it just helps stabilize that structure, that uh, you know, the, the molecular structure inside. I can't really back that up, but that's, that's my suspicion anyway. Surprisingly, this stayed straight. Yep. I was really worried because like I tend to get my knives too thin. It's, it's the patented, uh, jig. State of the art. You're not gonna check for hardness on camera. Yeah, we can. I didn't know if you wanted to do that. I don't want to leave this one in there. I'll it yeah, I better start Once painting. Once we get this one all, all quenched and clamped in, we'll check the hardness on yours. I mean, we kind of already know it's hard, but I figured the people at home would want to know how you can tell. Sure. I 
got one to work out yet, so let's see how it goes. Diamond files for checking for hardening. It's not that one. File skates. So, what that's telling you is basically the edge of this knife is harder than that file. That's really all you can ascertain from that. Because it doesn't bite into it. Yeah, it's not biting in. You're not able to change the shape of the metal. You're not, we're not can forge scale off of it, you know. But that knife is getting hard. And through a miracle of shenaniganry, it's straight. I, didn't, I was a little concerned about that. Well, it's not it the- It was awful thin. It's not the first time that we've well, it's all my knives are tend to be the thin ones. <laughs> no, it's not, man. I get carried I away with you. the I get carried away with the grinder. The uh, the kitchen knife that I made for uh, our buddy Rick, which is like my fourth knife, I think. Uh, when I quenched that thing, it came out and was like, "Well, you can peel uh, watermelons with it." Oh, is that right? It already matches the curvature. <laughs> uh, that that was a. Man, that was a learning experience for sure. But you were able to straighten that one out, though. Yeah, I you? got it. I, I had to. I went back through and had to do another round of thermocycle and quench it, and then I had to shim it in the temper to keep it straight. Uh, and honestly, I think the biggest issue with that was I had ground it too thin, and it had some spots that were thinner than others, and that caused it to pull to that side. Live and learn. This turned out nice, man. You did a good job. Let's focus on it. God, that is nice. All right, let me check this little guy. It's as straight as we started out. Nice. Not too bad. Nice. These knives are a lot of fun, but there's a, uh, they're kind of tricky. They're, they're not as simple as they appear. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Are you going to get all philosophical now? No, it's just with the tapers and crap. I know. It just, just makes them a little trickier. Um, especially, oh shit, that's it. Because the thickest point on this knife, on the one I made, is back here at the back. So it tapers all the way down, and then it's a different angle for the blade. Mm -hmm. And then it tapers from the top down this way. And then you set the bevels, and so there's a different taper right. angle. It's so just, it's, it's like there's multiple geometries it's a of lot the knife. Of, it's a lot of tricky stuff, and we'll see how close I cut when it comes time to put the handles on. So, All right, so our next step, like I said, we'll, we'll temper these up so they're actually usable. Um, because most likely, if we were to drop one of these on the concrete, it would probably break the tip off. Or snap it, or whatever. Harder than Chinese algebra? Yep. I'm not seeing any cracks around our finger holes. That's good. That's another area of concern on these knives. Punching these holes in there can this? get you a crack. Like right in here. Because of the stress that it puts on yeah, them. Yeah, it's not real easy on them. I don't see any on that one. I'm not seeing any cracks on there. I think we're in good shape. Nice. All right, nicely done. 
Uh, so I think we'll probably call it here for this episode. Um, said the, the whole tempering cycle thing is a bunch of sitting around waiting on for it to come out of the oven. So it's not really something it's that fun to watch. Um, we'll probably do another video when it comes time to do the handles. Um, we'll get set up on that. I think... I think I'm gonna use this. I think it's Thuya Burl wood for my handles. I may put some liners on there, uh, some red G10 liners. I've done that before and I really liked it. Um, I was gonna do vine work on that and I forgot. Oh well. And then I'm not sure if you can see that this is the type of handle material that I'll be using on mine. It's a uh, Python scale micarta. Don't worry, no snakes were harmed in the making of this micarta. It's made from real pythons. <laughs> how, do they, how do you think they get them in the mold? Uh, probably lure them in with, with mice. With candy. Candy. All right, well, um, be sure to drop us a comment down below. If like, you have share. any questions about any of this stuff. Um, if you've got comments or ideas of something you'd like to see us make in a series, we'll be happy to do that if we can. Don't come up with something too crazy. Um, I think we've got another series planned probably, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks out. Then we'll be starting a whole new series. Uh, it should be pretty exciting. Uh, there will be costumes involved. So, you know, it's going to be one of those kind of shows. All right, anything else you want to say to the folks, James? Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and uh, share. So, you guys have a great day. Bye. Good morning and welcome back to Evil Shenanigans and our world headquarters. World headquarters and training center. Uh, okay. Can we start over? <laughs> Not really. Can we start over? <laughs>